Second, and Tony Archer waiting for an all clear. James Maloney was dynamic against the Tigers last week. He gets us underway. And the kickoff goes down to Cooper Cronk to give it to Jesse Bromwich to work it out towards the 20. Numbers in the tackle immediately there for the Warriors. Packer was there, so was Luck. Now they race in, Mannering leading the charge on Brian Norrie. They take him to ground, driving him backwards in the process. Bromwich will take a second carry in the first three plays. Packer driving in as well. The Warriors try to make a statement early with their defence here tonight. Good run by Proctor. He brings it all the way back to the 40. That was tremendous work. Now Smith going one way, then the other, looking for a fast play of the ball to ease the pressure here on Cooper Cronk, who gets it away. They were chasing out. Lilliman was leading the charge, so was Lewis Brown. And the kick goes down to Tupo, who is driven backwards in a strong tackle. Nielsen was there, so was Sikamanu. A good set of six to open up this one for the Melbourne Storm, despite the early pressure from the Warriors' defence in the first three plays. But prompt to help get them out of trouble. Now Kevin Locke. Let go. This star fullback, what a season he's had in 2011. And they work it forward. Lilliman it is. He was tremendous in that second half comeback against the Tigers last week as Hamaya works it across to Russell Packer. And again tonight, they'll use Folletti Matteo, the strike weapon, off the bench. Here's Maloney kicking and hit as he did so. Cameron Smith got to him, but there was nothing wrong with the contacts later. Bringing it back and ducking in the tackles, weaving and jinking and returning it all the way to the 40. Well, he does it at speed, Billy Slater. His anticipation is second to none. It's difficult for the opposition to try and find space because he gets to that football on the full. What a player he is. He gets there quickly, he's decisive, and he's got speed. So Prompter will play it just outside the Warriors 30. Cronk coming back to the short side. Wrapped up there by Elijah Taylor, the starting side tonight. As Cameron Smith, the first receiver, puts it up. A test early on for Kevin Locke, but he takes it nicely. No real pressure there. Gareth Widdop. That elbow heavily bandaged, was thereabouts, but didn't contest the ball. Interesting decision by the Melbourne Storm. Put the ball in the air, but not to Manu Vatavai. I thought he would have been the person they would have been looking to test in the air early in this contest. Now Mannering. Looking it up towards the 40. He'll play it there. They've used up four plays in this set of six. No mistake from... Either team as yet. Now Lilliman. Good carry. Brings it back to the halfway line where he was stopped there by Norrie and also Cronk. Now some pressure on Maloney, who slides it off the side of the boot. It'll bounce inside the touchline, and Anthony Quinn will field it and bring it back to be grabbed there by Inu and also Mannering. It's a great kick by Maloney. There was some pressure there. Now Nielsen. When you play against the Melbourne Storm, your kicking game, it has to be good. You have to find space. You have to make the ball run along the ground. You need to make your back three work. Here's Smith. Into Norrie. Works it up towards the halfway line. Little plays left in this set, so they go to the short side. To Manu, who made a good run. Stepped away nicely from Maloney, then the ball comes away from him, and they'll say a penalty. He's a damaging back row, Sikamanu, playing on the left edge tonight. Well, he spotted up Lance O'Hire there. He was able to earn his team a penalty, and the Melbourne Storm are on the attack for the first time in tonight's game. There's a chance to go for the two points there, but they'll keep the pressure on, and it's Bromwich who works it down within five of the Warriors line. Smith out of dummy half, searching to his right-hand side, linking up with Cronk. Now Proctor got away from the tackle there of Brown, but back on the angle. Into Luck and also Ohio. Smith out the back, Widdop sliding to the left-hand side. Manu through a hole, and Melbourne's pressure tells. Not quite five minutes gone, and it's the Storm who take the lead in the preliminary final.
Well, they execute their play so well. They identify weaknesses in the opposition and they pounce. And they rehearse and rehearse that training to perfect them on the biggest night. And it was a lovely pass from Gareth Widdop onto Sikamanu, who earned the penalty in his previous run for the Melbourne Storm to get them in this position. Just beside the uprights, he should comfortably make it six points to nil. Wasn't the best strike. He adds the extra two. Six nothing it is. And perhaps Melbourne trying to make a statement early on as far as their intentions in this game. They've won just three of their past eight games against the Warriors. They really have the wood on the Melbourne Storm. And there aren't too many teams who can say that, but it was beautifully worked by a of sliding across, dragging defenders with him, and then with Manu. Big and strong, back on the angle. They couldn't find a way to stop him. And the right edge of the Warriors had trouble in the first half against the West Tigers last weekend. And Craig Bell Bellamy would have identified that throughout the week. Able to continue to come down that side of the field. They look to get it, Maloney and Inu. Here's Norrie taking it across the 30-metre line. He'll play it there midway through this set of six and Cameron Smith will kick early in the tackle count on play number four thinking about a 40-20 he had a bit more angle on the kick would have given Locke a real chase even with his speed it's a tremendous sight isn't it this crowd at Amy Park a real sea of purple here tonight and great to see this newish venue almost full to capacity a rugby league fixture like this. Here's Vatuve doing what he did in the second half last week against the Tigers. The role he played can't be overshadowed. It was enormous. Oh, he's just a damaging winner. winger. He absorbs your energy. You have to defend him, and you need numbers to defend him. As the Warriors looking to play out a dummy half, Ohio onto Maloney, keeping his legs pumping. 25 away from the Melbourne Storm line. Mattering feeding it back here for Johnson, who hooks a kick right across the field towards Vatavay, as it turns out. He'll catch it and dump it out the back. Got to be careful because had Duffy picked that up, he was off and running. Now a kick charged down by the Melbourne Storm, and they're going to say not played at. That's an interesting call in itself, and so they put another kick in for Billy Slater. He steps one, almost steps another before he's wrapped up there by Packer. He looks sharp tonight, Billy. But it's an interesting decision by the referee. I thought Todd Lowry was moving forward. He had to play at the football. Didn't he? He certainly was going towards the football to put pressure on the kicker. But my way of thinking, it certainly was played at and could well have been six more tackles for the Warriors. Instead, Melbourne work it back up towards the halfway line. Here it is again. Well, there's no doubt. I mean, that was being played at by Larry, even threw up the arm to protect himself and almost to charge the ball down. A tough call against the Warriors, who didn't get too many go their way against the Tigers. Not that it hurt them in the end, but certainly could have. 9 4 penalty count against them. And Ivan Cleary made mention of that in the post game conference. I'm sure there would have been a discussion. Bill Harrigan and Stuart Raper at the referee's office in the lead up to this game here tonight. They showed us last week they could handle adversity as Vatuve carrying the ball strongly again and now he's on his team a penalty. Putting his hand up early tonight, Big Manu. And they've responded well, the Warriors, after being rocked early on last week by Wes. They were rocked again in pretty quick fashion. Tonight, uh, yet to make a mistake, and despite the defensive error, which led to the Manu try. They've hit back well, and they get a chance right here. Try and respond on the scoreboard. Lilliman with the opening carry of this set. The player just outside the 20, Ohio, goes to Michael Luck. And takes it forward. 
with about 15 on the line. Ohio at dummy half, looking, saying, who wants it? What have we got set up? He jumps out of dummy half and comes to Maloney at the back. Lock, he gives it to Tupo. A chance on the angle, back towards the line. But they get numbers there to stop him. Good sliding defence by Melbourne. And he is big and strong, Tupo. They call him the mini beast. Out the back it comes, Ohio. He keeps it alive. Taylor now, grabbed there by Champion. Good ball. Johnson goes over the top. It sits up here for Vaduve, who gets away from Champion's tackle, gives it back to Lewis Brown, and he'll be stopped 15 metres out. From sideline to sideline they go. Taylor comes back to Johnson, who chips it. A chance for Renu! He can't repeat what he did last week, but he doesn't need to, because it went backwards to Tupo, and the Warriors have hit back. Well, it was a good kick from Sean Johnson. Ben Inu was charging through. He lost sight of him, Dane Nielsen. And then it was a one-on-one -on -one contest between Inu and Quinn. And Inu knocks the ball back into the arms of Tupo. And he did particularly well there to get his body low and to crash across and score. Well, only about 13 metres in from the Western touch line. Strikes it pretty well off the upright and over it goes. And we're all locked up here at Amy Park in Melbourne. Six all the Storm and the Warriors for the right to take on the Sea Eagles in the big one next Sunday night. Here's Inu again flying clearly backwards off his hands. Tupo had to do was pick it up and dive into score. Good crack to do just perhaps the flight of the ball beat him slightly, but worked out well for the Warriors, who, as we said, had responded well off the back of the Sikamanu try. And now Lilliman charging at Proctor and Norrie and also Bromwich. Now stopping just inside the 20. Ivan Cleary. Headed for the foot of the mountains at Penrith in 2012, but hoping to lead his side to a grand final. First, they appeared in a grand final back in 2002 against the Roosters. And to be denied by Brad Fittler and the men from Bondi Junction. Here is Evan Locke playing, of course. The coach was a member of that side in 2002. This is his sixth season in charge as their mentor as Ohio takes it forward. The player just outside the 30 as Packer comes across to Maloney. Lowry trying to reach out and put him off. Slater desperate to get to it, lost it, taps it backwards. They'll say knock on off the initial touch. It went off Billy Slater and forwards. Well, that was a good set of six there by the Warriors. They made plenty of metres. They got to their kick. Billy Slater attacked it like no one else. 